Um, this is a scheme which we brought forward. And I, I, firstly, I apologise. This is actually a scheme which is being done in Lambeth. Um, I've left Lambeth. I'm now at Greenwich. But part of the deal is that, obviously, Greenwich let me come to these things if I use their branding. Um, and unlike Jeremy, I can make a view and I can either blame it on Lambeth or blame it on Greenwich. <laughs> um, so just a quick overview of Lambeth. Um, population, 300,000, rising. Um, these figures were based on a study done for central London. Um, dwellings, obviously an increase with development and what have you in, in a very densely populated or very dense area of London. Um, water demand in Lambeth alone would be rising to 9.8 million litres a day. Um, the combined sewer system, 98% of the borough is combined. Very small bit of surface water down in the south of the borough it's at um, Stretton Vale. And most of it is, we believe, around a 1 in 15 design. Um, the sewage for central London will increase. Um, we've got 14 critical drainage areas as part of the outputs of Drain London. And Lambeth hold just over 1% of the national flood risk. And no natural water courses. So my life was very, very easy compared to Greenwich where I've got water courses. Um, so I've got all these problems. We've got increase in population, increase in development, um, an ageing network infrastructure, which, to be fair to Thames, they're not going to come along and dig up every single road in the borough and replace it. Um, so something has to be done. So obviously solutions, sustainable drainage, green infrastructure, design, maintenance, enforcement, and blame Thames Water, which is what we like to do. That's the that, yeah, the cheapest option. We've cleaned our gullies, it's your problem. Um, and again, looking at everything, it's kind of, well, what can we do to retrofit green infrastructure, sustainable drainage? How do we get the design right? Um, as a highways engineer, I should really have just gone to the bottom point and just blamed Thames Water. But I like a challenge, so I thought I'd go off on one. And I wanted to get something like this from Portland into a street like this. And it was... How can I do that? How can I get those things, or how can I get that street looking like that? So I decided on a location. Um, roads, a little triangle by a church. So that's our bluey, and that's Chatsworth. The blue line, that's the out modelling outputs from Drain London, um, and it's within a critical drainage area, and obviously the redder it is, the potential flooding is greater. That line is actually part of a river ephra, uh, which links back to Kevin's presentation with that CSO outfall, which is actually the river ephra of Vauxhall underneath MI6. Um, and also fits in with a project that Helen's dealing with, the lost ephra. So we've got this ribbon running through the borough, which pretty much is most of a surface water problem in Lambeth. Where the river was is where the surface water problems are generally going to be. So, I knew that I wanted all these things, plus more. I knew that it had to be low maintenance. I knew that I'm going to need a lot of surveys. I can't just walk in and go, yeah, well, we'll just do that. I know utilities are going to be a problem. Um, it's got to have amenities. People have got to enjoy it. People have got to be part of a solution which takes it to door-to-door, -to -door, you know, not just fence-to-fence, -fence, but door-to-door. -door. So, de-paving, looking at front gardens. Water efficiency, how can we get residents to be more efficient? Um, and obviously build community. So, trying to look at what to do, and I thought, well, I can't deliver this by myself. My record on community engagement is probably not the best, having had a death threat and um, very threatened with a high court injunction. So <laughs> I thought it best I, I'd leave a community engagement to someone who knows what they're doing. Um, so I went to Sustrans, and the reason I went to Sustrans is because I was involved in a project with them, um, a um, pilot project a few years before, and I liked the way they engaged with the community, and I just thought it was ideal, I thought it was perfect, and it fits in with part of their, their programme and their projects. I also needed someone to help me with the design, so I went to Steve Wilson at EPG, um, 
and I need someone else to help me with modelling. So I went with to URS, and they've agreed to write the final report as and when the scheme is, is finally delivered. And we'd used the term maintenance contractor at Lambeth, which is FN Conway, who have delivered 99% of the work in Lambeth already. So we had an inception meeting in Bristol. Why, you ask, would Lambeth go to Bristol? Because I was actually there genuinely on business. So it was just easier to pull everyone together up there. And we went, um, had a meeting at URS, URS office. Everyone turned up, and Sustrans took us for a site visit to Things in Bristol, which is one of their first DIY street, in essence. Um, and there's these lovely little things. I, haven't, I couldn't find the actual photo I wanted with the marbles on the sewer cover. But the sewer cover, Dave, remember? The sewer cover, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because where the EFRA goes at Chatsworth and Ard Louis actually runs under there, and there is actually a sewer cover. And again, looking at the EFRA as this ribbon through the borough, if we can link that with an image such as a yellow fish or what have you, and you can start beginning to build a story through the borough. Quite not, I'm not quite sure how MI6 would take that, but it's always <laughs> worth a try. <laughs> um, so we pulled these people together. We were quite clear on what we wanted to do, how we wanted to do it. So surveys I commissioned. I commissioned parking surveys because having delivered 20 mile an hour zones um, and other transport initiatives, I knew that parking is a very emotive subject in central London. So we looked at saturation. And as you can see, Chatsworth had the most parking at 70%, and that was on a Saturday morning between 11 and 1, bizarrely. Not during the week, but on a Saturday. And Ard Louis, as you can see, hardly any parking at all. Um, we did the surveys twice. The second one in 2013, Ben will probably touch on. We, we did that for a reason, basically because the residents didn't believe the first set of surveys we did. Um, the automatic traffic count, now that was a surprise to me. Those, both those roads are in a 20 mile an hour zone and it is physically calmed. So there's speed cushions in there. Now in a physically calmed 20 mile an hour zone, we should be looking at what's called an 80, the average speed, around about 20 to 23 miles an hour at most. And to actually come up on a traffic calmed road with an 85th percentile of 28 miles an hour, is not good by any stretch of the imagination. 26 miles an hour, for w once you look at Chatsworth and you understand Chatsworth, again, that's not a good speed. It shouldn't be happening. Um, so obviously something needs to be done. And again, introducing traffic calming, but making a traffic calming, besides looking at Portland, should alleviate and mitigate that measure. Rain gardens, we... Steve designed some rain gardens for us and we kind of looked at a parking bay area or two parking bays, so two metre width and the space is, is one to two cars. Um, losing one to two cars, you can generally justify or persuade people that that's the best thing to do. I stupidly answered a question at a Sirewind conference of runoff reduction and I said I'd like to see a 5% reduction in runoff across the borough because that overall would give greater capacity within your network. Um, however, we can't measure that. <laughs> so it is, it is a bit of a dream. Again, typical depth, I was looking at around 450 mil. The reason for that is utility should be in the carriage road, 650 in a footway around 400. Although some utilities have invented the um, paving slab with the cable running through it. Um, <laughs> So again, it's, it's trying to be understand what's going on in the street already and working with that and working around that. Um, again, I wanted to use everyday materials because most contractors, you give them something new, they're just totally flummoxed. They're kind of like, they just look at it and think it's something from outer space. So again, it's about using traditional materials and traditional construction methods, just tweaking them a little bit. Um, Steve gave us three options. As you can see here with different capacities, we did start getting prices um, and we did start looking at runoffs, but then I got them modelled or I got, a, I got the rain gardens model. That 
is a case study on the Sustrain website and is available, and the modelling report is available on that. So they're the head, two of the headline figures. The 26% reduction is Chatsworth, which is flat. The 13% reduction is Ardlui on the slope with a check down. So there's obviously a difference in what it's coping with and managing. So there's our kind of baseline figures. There's option on the left-hand side is option two, I believe, or option three, uh, as Steve designed. On the right, that's the topo and Steve laying out the rain gardens, and they're as close to existing gullies as, you, as possible, so for overflow, exceedance, uh, and easier to drain. Black lines are just me mucking about and having a bit of fun. Um, what I will show is that manhole cover is where the River Ephra runs through, and you can, you can hear it, or what used to be the Ephra. Cars without this here just come flying through, don't even stop. So they're just flying through that junction. There's nothing to stop them. So again, that's why the speeds are very high. And now it's at this point, I can hand over to Ben. And he can take you through the community engagement. Hi, so I'm Ben. I'm the uh, Communities Manager for Sustrans in London. Um, and Sustrans are a sustainable transport charity. So we work across the country on various different schemes with schools uh, and workplaces. But we also have a um, street design team where we do neighbourhood scale, street scale projects. Uh, and that's how Owen and I met up. Um, it's really exciting coming to the Suds and not Duds talks and uh, when Paul calls me and it's, someone tells me it's Paul from Syria, and I'm usually not in the office because I'm all over the shop, um, and it really confuses people in my office. Toby's like, Who, wh wh why are you calling Syria? I just, uh, you know, <laughs> they think I'm up to all sorts of things. Um, they're very relieved when they find out it's uh, sustainable drainage rather than any sort of trafficking or anything. Um, so DIY Streets essentially is uh, community-led design. So we go to a neighbourhood that has um, problems with rat running or problems with um, high volumes of traffic um, and residents take us through those problems um, and together we come up with various solutions as to how we can uh, remedy, remedy those issues. And it often touches on a mul multiple different problems, everything from um, yeah, driving through to lack of green space or underused green space, personal safety. So it's all about getting people travelling actively and where you live um, is the first step in that. Um, so Owen had come across our work uh, and liked our approach and thought that it would fit in really nicely. My wife's sister lives in Portland, Oregon, so we go there a lot, uh, well, quite a lot. And um, I was really taken with their Green Streets approach of how they incorporate placemaking with traffic calming, with uh, sustainable drainage, and it's just you know really tied up. So we're really enthousi enthusiastic to get involved. Um, so our, our community engagement approach is, uh, from the outside, could seem a little haphazard. It occasionally is a bit haphazard. Um, so on a really beautiful morning, um, we turn up with uh, a few um, blank pieces of laminated paper um, and a little bit of bunting and some chalk. And we just set up an event on the back of the garden fence at the T-junction in, uh, in the middle of the street. I think... Owen and certainly um, some of the other wider team were a little surprised uh, and, and were a little unsure possibly, uh, particularly when the resident who lives here sort of drove around the corner, I don't know why he didn't walk, but he drove around the corner and asked what we were doing and I explained and uh, apologised for not knocking on his door first to ask him if we could borrow the other side of his fence. Um, but once it got started, we'd flyered residents all beforehand and uh, sort of benefit of going up to people's doors and putting in an, a newsletter that looks incredibly different from the pizza delivery notice or the takeaway notice um, means that you have loads of conversations on the streets. So I was able to tell lots of people that we were going to be here and we we're going to be looking at this, this program and it was about sustainable drainage. It's about greening their street. It's about slowing traffic. There's a school just at the top here, um, which some of the local kids go to, but a lot of people come from quite a wide area, so there's quite a lot of school traffic, so there's lots of sort of interest around that. Um, so it's really just engaging with residents on a level that tweaks their interest. So, you know, having a program that covers three different major areas, from greening to traffic calming to um, placemaking, 
there's usually some sort of point of interest for, for a lot of people. Um, and we just wanted residents to come along and, and essentially just tell us their problems. And I think this is true for much of England, but people in London particularly like to tell other people their problems um, and what's wrong. And it usually is quite an energetic um, session, as you can see from the post-it notes. So um, people just came along, we just asked them, what are the issues in this immediate area? It doesn't have to be about flooding, it doesn't have to be about speeding, it can be anything. Is there fly tipping? Do you feel safe at night? Do you let your kids out to play? And we just had a huge response. Um, and it turns out there was lots of flooding and there's lots of people parking um, for the school and they don't feel safe necessarily with their kids outside. Um, there's lighting issues, there was road surface issues. So all these things came to light. Um, and it's amazing with these sort of projects, how many of those little points that you can actually touch on and often offer a solution to. Um, but at this stage, we didn't really get into that much detail. It's literally letting them kind of vent um, and, and uh, get it out of their system. Because I think with these processes, it's really important that you get onto a more positive footing as quickly as possible. But if you give people this chance to just have at it for a good sort of hour and a half, um, that, that can kind of help. So it was, yeah, really great. We got loads of feedback. Um, and it gave us this foundation from which to work. Um, and all through this process, we were then filling people in. So we, out of that, we kind of were able to establish some priorities and some objectives. So we understood fundamentally what local residents felt were some of the problems. Um, so we were able to draw up a newsletter and uh, lay out what we thought, based on their feedback, were the main objectives, the main priorities what we would be able to tackle and what we wouldn't be able to tackle. So it's really important to manage expectation. Um, it's kind of that really difficult balancing act of managing expectation, but asking people just to just go for it and think whatever you like. Um, it's a real balancing act, but if you kind of get it right, I think it really delivers. Um, so then there's a, a, uh, there's a church hall just further up the road, slap bang in the middle of the um, particular neighborhood, so it's really useful having that, that base. Um, where we set up, so this isn't part of our sort of DIY streets process, where we get a scale model set of the, um, of the road. And because of the road layout, we're able to have a sort of 1 in 50 scale model. So um, one road coming out here, one road coming out there. And the turnout was really impressive. It was really good. It's a very engaged neighborhood. Um, so people came, came in and obviously we're tr make it, trying to make that transition from venting your spleen to actually doing something. Um, which takes a little bit of um, managing um, <coughs> from us. So some people f initially thought that this was about, as well as doing the post at the first session, this is about actually modelling what the problems are rather than modelling what the solutions are. But once we get over that little um, communication uh, hiccup, uh, it becomes really positive and people get the chance to actually start moving stuff around um, the kids can get involved, and it's really useful for us to be able to show people what isn't possible as much as what is possible. Um, residents were able to show us where the, some of the speeding problems were, where, which houses were getting flooded, so we actually marked on the paper which houses sellers flood. Um, we're able to show the size of things, so it's really hard for people to conceptualise. When you're talking about these rain gardens, when you're talking about greening the street, what does that mean? How much space will that mean that you'll take up? Um, and it really activated people's imaginations. And I think um, the councillors came along for the local area and they really liked this. It's a very councillor sort of thing, isn't it? They can get in there and there might be, you know, there's always a chance a journalist might turn up or um, they didn't, so they might be a bit disappointed. But, you know, it's a really good opportunity to be seen out there doing and, you know, to get them on board is really exciting. So we were able to sort of work through some designs, come up with some opportunities to... Um, show what it might look like um, and the benefits. Um, and following on from that, we drew up the first set of really um, basic designs with lots of different options. So people had the chance. So nothing was decided, nothing was um, given over to it. But what it meant that in an area that you know, has fluctuating parking, you actually had people saying they wanted to donate their parking space to the cause. Um, and not to rose tint this, because it certainly wasn't Everybody, you know, everyone wasn't sort of rushing to our door to give a thrusting their parking space, which isn't actually their parking space, but we'll go, we, we're saving that conversation for another time um, on us. But just to have a few people in London saying, you know, you can 
outside my, I want this outside my house is really exciting. Um, and so we gave people lots of different options as to how they could, um, what, what they would like to see. And these were kind of presented in sort of three scales of, um, for somebody who wouldn't, didn't want the scheme, I guess it could be three scales of severity. Um, for people that are really uh, into it, so three scales of like how amazing their neighborhood could be. Um, so we weren't pushing anything on them. Everybody, you know, it, it was very transparent and people could really see that, um, and it, it's, see what the options were and it, and it sort of challenges them. Um, and we got permission from the guy for his fence again and he was totally, totally happy. And interestingly, we were engaging with all of these people who back onto the space which is a very different engagement um, technique because, yet yeah, they've got little gates at the back, so they bring their rubbish out, and a couple of them have garages. But they all face onto the other side, and their concern is that if we make significant changes here, which will limit some of the parking, is that then going to move everybody <coughs> to their street? So that's why we want to ensure that they were engaged so we weren't moving a problem further down the street. Um, but that takes quite a balancing act. So you've got people who front onto the street, who feel like they have ownership of that. But then they're also having to engage and work with people who back onto the street and in their eyes might not have so much ownership over it. So that's kind of a bit of a balancing act. But anyway, what was really interesting with this was nobody wanted to be seen going for the wimpy option. I think it's probably the best way of putting it. I mean, it's beautiful, but you know, it's not, very, not hugely exciting. So nobody wants to be seen doing that. So most of the votes were in and around here. There were very few negative. Um, and the benefit of having it wide open in the street, people were making us, residents were making us cups of tea, which doesn't always happen, but was really nice in this instance. Um, and they started, so obviously there's four or five of us, a couple of people from Sustrans, urban designer, me, Owen, and technical designer, talking to people. But by this stage, we'd already gone through the model kit session of which lots of people had come to and then had conversations between themselves. And they started talking to one another about all of this. So it wasn't us standing on our soapbox, preaching to everybody, telling them how lucky they were to have us here. They were talking to each other about the benefits, talking to each other about some of the issues. And really, yeah, sorry, really buying into it. Um, and then we just slowly take it down, all the time reminding people that they've chosen this, what their priorities are, reminding people um, who haven't previously come along to some of the other things, um, what stages we've been through so this hasn't just kind of thrown, been thrown up. We now start doing some really nice renderings of what it might look like, which really gets people excited. At this stage, you always get people coming out of the woodwork who say they haven't heard of this and who are we. So you can, they kind of see this whole story unfold and then other residents are then informing them as to what's been going on. We do a street trial, so we get loads of straw bales delivered, which are incredibly hard to get your hands on. They're now massive and round, which is far less conducive to the sort of barn dance effect that we go for. Um, but we did manage to get our hands on them. It's really tactile. Traffic is still moving through the area. It allows you to m make lots of changes. Uh, you can obviously do it on a computer, but this is far more fun um, and far more visual and gets people out and gets people involved who haven't previously been involved, who would normally kick off when the construction was actually starting. Um, and so this is what, this is what we hope to um, be delivering shortly. Um, really sort of curved lines, really slowing the traffic down at that junction. Um, yeah, and managed to really negotiate with people around parking issues, around um, green space, uh, and, and really tackling some of the school, problems, school traffic problems. So they were all parking up around these corners. So that will um, stop that from happening. Um, and we did minimize parking loss, so we can do some permeable parking spaces, as well as uh, taking away parking. And that's it on that one. Thank you.